Chapter Seven of the Barbados Girl by Barbara Hofflin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. It will be readily supposed that with the hopes now entertained of Matilda's conduct, Mrs. Harewood did not hesitate to provide the governess we have spoken of, and accordingly Miss Campbell was soon established in the family. She found Matilda rapid in her ideas, persevering in her pursuits, but prone to resentment on every trifling occasion, and still subject to finding herself cause for repentance. On these occasions Miss Campbell conducted herself with composure and dignity, as if she considered a petulant child below the notice of a sensible woman. By this means the pride of the culprit was humbled. She was taught to retread her first steps, and perceived that she was an insignificant being, obliged to the suffrage of her friends, and only capable of being valuable in proportion to her docility and amiable conduct. Mrs. Harewood had been accustomed to give her children the treat of a ball at Christmas, but on this year she put it off until midsummer, partly because she was afraid in so large a party and with such various dispositions, Matilda might not be able to conduct herself with perfect propriety during a whole evening, and partly because she wished her to learn to dance, for although this was, in her eyes, a very secondary accomplishment, when compared to solid knowledge, yet as a healthful and innocent amusement and called for in order to form the person in that station of life in which matilda was likely to move she desired to see her acquire at least as much of it as would preserve her from the appearance of awkwardness it was an object of anxiety with this truly maternal friend to save her from all unnecessary mortification at the same time she earnestly desired to see her tractable humble and gentle time now passed away pleasantly for all were occupied and therefore happy the idle are subject to many errors and therefore many sorrows from which the busy are exempt the good governess studied the temper and disposition of her pupils and drew them forth in the happiest manner not by making exhibitions of their attainments to others but by showing them what was necessary to themselves for their improvement she considered the work of education as sowing good seed which shall spring up with vigour in advancing life in proportion to the depth of the soil and its preparation for receiving it whilst miss campbell inculcated those branches of polite learning which give a grace to virtue she was still more desirous of inculcating virtue itself by grafting it on religious principle and that fear of god which is the beginning of wisdom the children of mrs harewood had been taught from their earliest days that prudence and charity must go hand in hand but it remained for miss campbell to impress this salutary truth on the mind of matilda who was naturally very generous but debased that feeling by ostentation and ever sought to indulge it with a vain and hurtful profusion until she became enlightened by her young preceptress who likewise in many other points regulated those desires in her pupils which blend good and evil and require a firm and delicate management she was very solicitous to render them active both personally and mentally knowing that the health of both body and mind depends upon their due exercise and that a taste for study is yet perfectly compatible with those various exertions to which the duties of a woman always call her in whatever sphere she may have occasion to move miss campbell wished to save her pupils alike from that perpetual fidgetiness which renders so many females unable to amuse themselves for a single hour unless their hands feet and tongue are employed and that pertinacious love of reading which renders them utterly unable to enter into the common claims of society while a new story is perused or a new study developed she considered these errors as diseases in the mental habit it was her duty to prevent or eradicate since they must be ever inconsistent with general duty and individual happiness time passed the vacation arrived and the young people had the pleasure of all meeting again matilda was nearly as glad as ellen to see edmund and charles who on their own parts were much improved and delighted to find the girls so matilda was in every respect altered and although she had not ellen's sweetness of temper yet she had greatly conquered her propensity to passion was very obliging in her general manners and considerate to her inferiors and attached to ellen her governess and mr and mrs harewood with a tenderness and gratitude that was very amiable and even affecting End of chapter seven